Good afternoon again. Um, we, uh, we had the gremlins apparently in the computer, so it cut off for some reason. So let me begin again by just saying thank you uh, all for being with us on this kind of dreary Friday afternoon. A couple of things we want to chat with you about today. One, I'm going to talk a little bit about the COVID numbers. Uh, and then I'm going to have Dr. Eccles here uh, to visit with you about COVID and also to take your questions. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk a little bit about tiny houses for any of you who have not uh, seen our announcement on the tiny houses. And then, of course, we're going to take your questions. Uh, so with regard to COVID and the numbers, uh, these numbers are our most recent numbers. As of yesterday, the city of St. Louis had 113 new cases. Now, let me just say it's still way too high, but it is uh, at least headed a, a bit in the right direction if we can sustain that for a little bit. Um, on a average number of new cases for seven days, 153 right now in the city of St. Louis. Uh, and let me just point out that what that equates to is 51 cases per 100,000 people. So city of St. Louis is at 51 cases, St. Louis per 100,000 people per day. St. Louis County is at 80. St. Charles County is at 109. Jefferson County is at 90. Uh, overall, the state of Missouri is at 82. So while our number is not where we want it to be at all, it is considerably better than our surrounding counties and the state as, as an average. And, uh, you know, we attribute that to a couple of things, but one of the most important ones is just how great the people of St. Louis have done and are doing uh, with regard to mask wearing, social distancing. I know that you are all adjusting your, your social calendars and keeping your groups small. So our numbers bear that out and that is very much uh, appreciated. Um, not just because we care about the numbers, but mostly because we care about you, we care about your neighbors, we care about your, your kids and your grandma and, and all the folks in your family. So uh, that's where our numbers are today. Now on a regional level, talking about um, hospital numbers, there are, these, these numbers are two days old. They always, hospital numbers are always two days old. There are basically a thousand people in the hospitals in our region today that are either COVID positive, that's 849, or suspected of being COVID positive, that was another 150. So that thousand people in the hospitals today is really um, taxing the capacity of our hospitals. And it's not so much about space, it's about people to take care of you when you're in the hospital. Um, and so that's something we all have to be very concerned about because unfortunately, people will still have heart attacks, get appendicitis, break their leg, uh, all the sort of normal emergencies, if, that, if that's a word, normal and emergency, you want to make sure, we all want to make sure that uh, the folks there working at the hospitals, doctors, nurses, all the ancillary staff that it, help, that it takes to take care of you have the capacity to do that. So that is, um, that's a very serious number. Uh, number of people in the ICU in the region today, 170 and 93 of those folks are on ventilators. Um, 130 people were admitted to the hospital two days ago, and 136 were um, discharged from the hospital. So those numbers are, are, um, are very serious numbers, and uh, uh, the city of St. Louis numbers are, are better than others, but they're still, they're still bad. Um, last thing I wanna say is there are more people getting tested, that's good. It is starting to tax the uh, labs a bit. Uh, and so we were running about three and a half days on average to get your test results back. And that's eased up, uh, inched up about another day. So um, hopefully that capacity will hold up because it's very important to get tested. Um, we know that we have on the horizon some, what we think is gonna be some good news, two vaccines that appear like they, they may be ready to go shortly. 
Um, maybe even a saliva at home test. You've may been reading about that. That would be extremely helpful in a lot of cases. But we're not there yet. We are, uh, you know, these numbers are still on the wrong t trajectory. They are still headed up. Um, and so we're asking you really just to um, lock down even a, a bit more. So I'm, with that, I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Eccles. I'm gonna slide out, he can slide in. He's gonna give you some updates. And uh, of course, he's the best person to answer your, your COVID questions. So thank you all, I'll be back. Dr. Eccles. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good afternoon, St. Louis. Um, as the mayor mentioned, I'm here to talk to you about what's happening on, on, as it relates to COVID-19. A lot of the data the mayor has already um, uh, shared with you. And so what we're seeing again is that uh, the majority of exposures and COVID-19 transmission is occurring uh, in those private uh, social gatherings. And so um, the last uh, health commissioner's order, which, was, which went into effect on last Saturday, November 14th, uh, prohibits any gathering, private gathering in the city of St. Louis of more than 10 people. And so we really need people to uh, understand the importance of this. Uh, this uh, executive order went into effect because uh, the transmission that we were seeing related to COVID-19 was occurring in small gatherings, small social gatherings um, across the city of St. Louis. And so we wanted to make sure we were implementing a targeted approach um, to address the root cause of the spread of uh, COVID-19 in the city of St. Louis. So we ask that every uh, resident, every visitor comply with this, um, with this mandate. Uh, again, the goal is to um, slow the spread of COVID-19 in our jurisdiction. We're also mindful that uh, Thanksgiving is next week as well as a few other holidays. And so we wanna provide a moment, uh, share this, share, take a moment to um, give you some updates uh, on things that you can do as an individual and as a family uh, to protect you and your family from COVID-19. So one thing that we want you to do is to not uh, participate in social gatherings of 10 or more people. And again, the goal here is to minimize the people that are potentially exposed to COVID-19, which, which will assist the health department with contact tracing um, efforts in the event that someone tests positive, um, but also limits the number of people that are potentially exposed to COVID-19 during the gathering. Uh, we also want you to avoid crowded gatherings. So this is also shopping season. So a lot of people like to go to the malls, the um, outlets, et cetera. So please um, be mindful when you're out in the community to maintain at least six feet of distance between yourself and individuals that do not live in your immediate household. This is really important to reduce your potential for being exposed to COVID-19 um, over the upcoming weeks. Uh, we also ask that you um, uh, reschedule any travel. So COVID-19 isn't just um, surging in the city of St. Louis in the St. Louis region, it's surging across the United States and the world. And so um, uh, prolonged travel or travel to um, uh, other jurisdictions can increase your risk for uh, being exposed to COVID-19 um, over, the, over the holiday season. Uh, we also ask that you identify di different ways to engage your family. Uh, during the holiday season. So I know typically you have large families come together, many generations will come into one household, but right now it's just not safe to do that. We have to be mindful of the potential impact that COVID-19 will have on individuals in your family who may have underlying medical conditions, individuals who may have um, suppressed immune systems, and individuals who just may be at overall increased risk of severe complications from COVID-19. So we really need that, we need everyone to really be mindful of that and limit um, the types of uh, contact that you have with other individuals. And so when we think about the activities that your families, um, that your family may uh, partic participate in, um, think outside the box a little bit. So maybe instead of having everyone at your home, maybe uh, just limit to your immediate household and spend quality time with those, with your immediate family. Um, that can look uh, like a, uh, several different, you can do several different things with that. So you can go to the park, you can uh, plug in the PlayStation 2 if you're, uh, PlayStation 4 if you're a, a gamer. Um, you can also play board games. So there are other ways that you can, uh, other me mechanisms of, uh, other ways to um, spend quality time with your family. And we ask that you think about doing those things during uh, this holiday season, which needs to look a little different because of COVID-19. Uh, thank you all for everything that you've done thus far. So the city of St. Louis, as the mayor mentioned, um, is uh, our numbers are better than the surrounding areas. However, we sh the numbers are still too high. And so we ask that you do your best, not only to protect yourself, your family, and the community at large, but also our public health and hospital systems. Do you have time for questions, Dr. Eccles? Sure. A uh, couple of questions about uh, current guidance or restrictions on visitors for senior centers and congregate care centers. 
Is there currently a ban or are all those facilities currently banning visitors in the city? Yeah, so typically during influenza season, um, long-term care facilities will um, uh, enforce um, visit visitation restrictions. And so that's not unique for COVID-19, but right now long-term care facilities in the city of St. Louis are restricting visitation. And the goal here is to protect um, their residents. So typically you have older residents who have underlying medical conditions who are residing in those uh, facilities. And so they're doing the, the role, the, the goal uh, for those facilities is to uh, reduce the potential um, for their clients or their residents being exposed to COVID-19 and having uh, severe complications. We've had questions about travel, uh, Dr. Eccles, about people coming and going into or out of St. Louis around the holiday, particularly college students. What is your recommendation for folks who are going to be coming in and out of the city around the holidays? So for individuals that are having to travel outside the jurisdiction, we ask that you um, quarantine for 14 days. So uh, I know the um, universities um, have protocols in place so they're actually doing testing for some of their students before they leave. Um, but we ask that individuals, if you have to travel outside the region, uh, please um, quarantine for 14 days after you arrive at your destination. Uh, that allows you to monitor your symptoms uh, in the event that you do develop symptoms or you report an, or, you, uh, or you find out that you've been exposed, you have an opportunity to monitor yourself and get tested. Um, and this will help prevent you from exposing other individuals if you, find, if you become uh, COVID positive. So about gatherings for Thanksgiving, Dr. Eccles, can you speak to uh, whether there's a difference about them happening indoor or outdoor? So we prefer for individuals to, to um, gather outdoors because of, uh, you have better ventilation. However, if you're not able to gather outdoors and you have to be in, indoors, again, remind yourself to, that you need to uh, limit the number of individuals that can attend the gathering. So make sure it, you're, you cap it at 10. Uh, don't, do not exceed 10, then it'll be a violation of city requirements. Um, but uh, make sure you limit limit the number of individuals that are attending. Uh, if you aren't able to have your event outdoors, make sure you're able to uh, either crack door, crack open some doors or open some windows, and that also helps um, increase improve ventilation um, in the indoor setting. I think we have two more questions for you, Dr. Eccles. Uh, just about COVID-19 in general, what are the current restrictions or guidelines that the city has in place for churches and houses of worship? So at, um, to date, um, churches have not been deemed to be uh, or determined to be um, uh, a significant source of transmission uh, for COVID-19. And so right now, we uh, churches are limited to um, the capacity restrictions, which means that you know they have to maintain this, individuals have to be six feet apart. Um, they also have to um, uh, adhere to the uh, face covering requirements in the city of St. Louis. Um, so those are right, those are the restrictions on uh, places of worship at this point in time. However, um, as we continue to monitor the data and we get information from individuals who test positive in their close contacts, um, if we identify that churches are uh, a source of transmission, uh, we may have to uh, imp implement um, or enforce uh, additional restrictions for places of worship. I think this is the last new question for you, Dr. Eccles. Uh, a couple of folks are watching asking about schools. What is the status of schools and what direction do you think they're going to be heading in in terms of moving forward with rising numbers? That's a great question. So we've been um, dialoguing with schools over the last few months. And one of the things that we've also seen is that there isn't a lot of transmission in schools either. Um, our focus in the city of St. Louis was to make sure that schools had good infection control and operation plans in place before they resumed in-person learning. And that has been very beneficial. So again, we've had very limited, very minimal uh, transmission in schools. And so schools are, have uh, done an amazing job implementing uh, the infection control and operation plan that they've created. Um, and so one of the things that we have to remind them of is you know, whether they resume uh, in-person learning in December or January or February, COVID-19 will be here. And so we have to make sure that we are really focusing on preventing uh, transmission and exposure of COVID-19 in those facilities. And again, the, the uh, school systems in the city of St. Louis have done an amazing job uh, protecting not only their staff, but their students. That's it, Dr. Eccles. So thank you all. <clears throat> you have any questions for me or can I talk about tiny houses? Tiny houses. Okay, good. So some of you may have seen that on Tuesday, we announced that there will be a, a tiny house village being located at 900 North Jefferson, which is the site of a former RV park, um, which makes it an excellent uh, location. And these uh, tiny houses will have beds, a desk, shelves, Wi-Fi, heating, air conditioning, 
uh, place to charge your phone. Uh, they're small, but they're they're actually quite um, quite nice and quite cozy. So we will be using those tiny houses to house up to 50 initially uh, of homeless people who who will certainly be better off in uh, a small but heated with electricity uh, tiny house uh, in a group setting. At that location, there are full bathrooms, showers, there's washers and dryers, uh, and, and uh, spaces where folks, there, there will be meals, spaces where folks can uh, get counseling or get social, uh, social workers to help them do whatever it is that they need to do to eventually move from the tiny house to an actual apartment or home of their own. Uh, so this is a transitional uh, approach, but I think certainly one that's needed. And considering the COVID situation, we are trying to get everyone to go into shelter. Uh, and these tiny houses, which you know, of course, are individual, will be much uh, will be much better uh, health-wise for folks. So we're excited about that that project. Uh, we expect the first people to be to move be moving in there early in December, so within a couple of weeks here. And um, so we're, we're excited that we're able to do that. We think it'll be a real positive thing. So we have some questions today, Mayor. Okay. Uh, David has a question about folks coming from <coughs> Metro East, St. Louis County, other jurisdictions coming to uh, the city for maybe dining or going to our businesses. Are you concerned about them uh, bringing COVID with them? Well, let me just say, and I know you just heard from Dr. Eccles, COVID is everywhere. You look at these numbers, um, and, and COVID's here in our city. It's in St. Louis County. It's, it's likely in your small group, potentially, as well. So COVID is everywhere. Um, what we've seen, and, and if you've been um, out in, in St. Louis, our restaurants have done a great job. Many of them have plexiglass uh, dividers between uh, say a couple of seats at the bar or between the tables uh, many of them have additional ventilation everybody has to wear a mask unless you're seated at your table eating and drinking uh, so our our restaurants have really done a good job and the data d t uh, does not indicate that this is spreading in restaurants any at least in the city of st louis any more than it's spreading anywhere else so that's why our restaurants continue to be open um, and I guess the other thing to think about here is the thousands of people who work in restaurants many of whom have already been laid off many of whom have already had their hours reduced and if it if we can do it safely we want to provide a, a situation where those people can continue to work earn a living provide for their families um, you know there are a lot of um, there's there's a lot of results from this COVID crisis that we're in now. We're seeing more domestic violence. We're seeing more uh, suicide. We're seeing way more violence, homicides, shootings, um, and we're seeing more folks relapse in terms of uh, drug treatment, and we're seeing more overdoses. So all those are also related to COVID, people being out of work, uh, and that sort of thing. So this is this is trying to balance all of that. Question about testing, Mayor, and I don't know if you talked about this at the top. Uh, is the city getting results faster than five days? This is a question from somebody who just got a test yesterday. We are getting results faster than five days, but it has gotten a little bit longer this week. We're seeing four and a half days. On, this is an average, of course. Um, and as more people get tested, the labs, you know, they have a finite capacity. We were about a, 10 days ago, we were down to an average of about three, three and a half days. So it is creeping up a little bit. Uh, we have commenters and questions about a shutdown on both sides of that issue. So do you have an mm -hmm. update on where the city stands about any form of a stay at home order or shelter in place order? So I think we, you know, we've talked about that and what we've said is we're really trying to do what is necessary. and. What we know is that much of the spread is happening in, uh, in homes, among family members, among neighbors, in small groups. You know, maybe it's as simple as you're having people over to, 
you know, watch a movie or watch a game uh, or just to socialize. Uh, so that is why we really have, uh, are encouraging people to limit their groups to 10 people, the same 10 people all the time. So we, at this point, nothing's off the table. We're going to continue to look at these numbers, but St. Louis City numbers are uh, about half of what they are in the rest of, of the region, a little bit. Uh, we have 51 cases on average per day per 100,000 people, so right around 150 cases a day. St. Louis County has 80 cases a day uh, on per 100,000 people. St. Charles has 110 cases per day per 100,000 100, people. So all of those things, I mean, they never go off the table, unfortunately, but if we can get people to, to uh, lock down their, their gatherings, not to have that big Thanksgiving dinner, not to, to socialize widely, uh, we think that we, we can make it through this, this spike that we're in right now. COVID question, Mayor, you mentioned the uh, thousand people in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Is the city in conversations about um, temporary hospital sites, alternative care locations, and helping sta hospitals boost staffing capacity? So we are part of the pandemic task force, and I'm sure hopefully you all watch Dr. Garza regularly. Uh, the pandemic task force is made up of the leaders, uh, elected leaders of the regions, the public health official of the regions, and the, the top medical uh, officials of the four main hospital systems. And we talk about this more than once a week. It is, you need beds, but what you need more is people to take care of those folks that are in the hospital. And if you remember back in the spring, early summer, um, COVID was not at this high level all across the United States. It was in more in pockets. And so now what we have is a situation with staffing in the hospitals that is very, very taxed. So it's not about adding the beds. You can't make a doctor between now and next week. You can't make a nurse between now and next week. Um, and, and, you know, they're tired too. So if you, if you don't want to sort of uh, close in your group for uh, your own family or for your neighbors, do it for those hospital workers who are very, very stressed and strained right now and and there just are not enough of them considering what's happening all across the u.s a couple of folks have asked uh, for a status update on rental and mortgage assistance and how mm -hmm. that's going and how many people we've been able to help so far do you have that uh no i don't okay <laughs> so <clears throat> i don't have the up-to-date numbers as of today i know we've had about eight thousand uh applications and i know that four o'clock on friday is the time that all of the um, uh, folks that are helping us process those are supposed to be turning in their numbers. So we'll bring those numbers to you on Monday afternoon. Uh, we know that people are continuing to be helped. Anyone who's in an eviction proceeding is, is getting moved to the top of the, of the list. Um, and what we do is we work with the tenant to get their documentation. We work with the landlord to get their documentation. We try to mediate between the two, and then when we determine what the rental assistance can be, we pay that check directly to the landlord. Um, so that's, that's the situation. I don't have the up-to-date numbers. We have a couple of tiny house questions, Mayor. Um, can you speak to some of the services that will be coming with folks who will be staying there? Mm -hmm. And are there volunteer opportunities uh, in the city to work with uh, unhoused individuals? There are volunteer opportunities. Uh, there's a group called uh, Winter Outreach, which is a uh, number of individuals from organizations around the area that help with uh, homeless outreach. Uh, we will be, when it's uh, 32 degrees, we will be beginning our um, <clears throat> warming buses, which folks can go to, and then we will take them to shelter at night. Uh, so there are some volunteer opportunities. And, you know, a lot of the places that previous in previous years we had worked with with regard to helping us house the homeless particularly in the winter uh, a lot of those places cut their capacity in half because of COVID because they they needed to have fewer people in their facilities um, and and most of them have not come back yet they also have a hard time with staffing and they have a hard time getting volunteers 
traditionally a lot of their volunteers have been older people, retired people, who are now at such great risk of contracting COVID that they're uh, they're not able to volunteer at this point. So uh, you, of course, would be welcome to contact any of those agencies and, and volunteer services. A couple of general questions, Mayor. Uh, quite a few folks have asked today about uh, jail visits and whether it's possible or the city has the capacity <coughs> to offer those online because we don't do them in person. Uh, I We do have jail visits uh, via telephone and I think that's a it's a FaceTime like uh, thing so yes that has that has been available but we are not doing jail visits in person I saw I know there are a couple of people who have uh, you know posted repeatedly 10 times 20 times 30 times you know that they want those in-person jail visits and and I wish we could offer that to you but in order to um, to keep COVID at bay, we just are not doing that. So, uh, you know, we're not doing that. Stacy has a question. This may be one of our <coughs> last ones, almost 2.30. Uh, Stacy has a question about the Board of Freeholders. Mm -hmm. Do you have an update on that on where that process stands and uh, mm -hmm. when it'll be moving forward? So I expect to uh, nominate some individuals to the Board of Freeholders again within the next week or so. I actually talking with uh, some individuals now and uh, just had a conversation with President Reed today about that. So uh, we are we are in the process. We're hopeful that once uh, these nine individuals are nominated that the Board of Aldermen will see fit to actually seat them. Um, and so we're trying to take the Board of Aldermen's uh, requests into consideration to the extent possible. So. And the last question, Mayor, uh, you made a big announcement this week, and we got a lot of folks writing in thanking for your years of service. That's nice. Uh, some folks have asked, do you have an opinion on a change in city government governance structure that could improve government and make it more efficient and effective? Oh, I have lots of opinions on that. But that's, that's a subject for a whole show. So, um, you know, our government structure is, our charter is extremely old. It, it was well-intentioned and it came out of a time when there had been a lot of corruption and that sort of thing <clears throat> close to 100 years ago. Um, it, it is a very uh, weak mayor system and you all know that because you watch the Board of ENA meetings sometimes. So. Uh, you know, you, you can read more about that. Of course, I have opinions about it, but, you know, the next mayor will lead us forward on that subject. That's it for today. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. You know, um, if I don't see you next week, because you may be getting ready for Thanksgiving or, or whatever, but if I don't see you next week, have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, everybody be safe. Keep your groups small. Wear a mask. Socially distance. Thank you all. Appreciate it.